Ron, how long have you been with Alphoric Seeds? Been with Alphoric Seeds 10 years. Okay. And why did you decide to work with Alphoric Seeds? Well, I've always, I've been in the seed business for about 30 years and total. And uh, the, the, my favorite crop to work with and the growers that I always enjoyed working with the most were the alfalfa growers and, and uh, working with not only the alfalfa growers themselves, but the end user, the cattle producers and the dairy producers. What is the, what is the territory or region that you cover? I cover Kansas, Colorado and Nebraska. What is, what's really unique about your territory? Well, we have a real wide spectrum of, of growers and conditions. And we have, you know, dry land in central and western Kansas, uh, dry land in eastern Kansas, where it's relying strictly on, on uh, available moisture from Mother Nature. Then we've got some really high productive ground in southwest Kansas, western Nebraska and in Colorado. And then also in Colorado, we've got really high altitude conditions where, you know, 7,500 to 8,000 feet growing conditions where seasons are short and, uh, can, you know, the quality of alfalfa is just tremendous in those, in those kind of growing areas. So uh, we've got a lot of dairies moving into the area and, uh, and that all contributes to the need for the of, of all different uh, qualities of alfalfa from high quality dairy alfalfa all the way to, you know, grinding hay and, and going into feedlots and then the cow calf producers as well. Excellent. Well, what are some of the alfalfa pests or diseases specific to your territory that should be a concern for your alfalfa growers? In our, in our drier dry land areas of Western Kansas and, and Colorado, we, you know, uh, disease pressure is, is somewhat limited there but then you get into eastern Nebraska and, and, uh, and eastern Kansas, we'll start seeing more, more areas of Phytophthora, uh, Phanomyces. Um, and those are two of the primary ones. And then weevil, um, alfalfa weevil is always a big uh, concern in the spring. And you know, keeping the eye on those conditions as well as this, the alfalfa aphid issue. Seems like every year alfalfa aphids get to be more and more prevalent. What are some of the common questions that you get asked by alfalfa growers? The biggest questions is they, they want to know about tonnage. You know, um, alfalfa growers are always looking at the, you know, they're marketing their own product. They're looking at, at being able to uh, capitalize on uh, the uh, uh, the tonnage that or quality, whether they're selling to dairies, when they're looking at different alfalfas, they're, those are the two of the biggest things that they're always asking about is tonnage and quality and, uh, and how they can get more out of both. What varieties of alfalfa fit this growing territory the best and why? In our, in our Alpharex lineup, uh, the area, the, the varieties that we use, we have we have a multiple varieties that we use, I guess is one way to put it because of the different growing conditions that we have. Our fours, uh, like 460 with the high jest and 457, those are very widely adapted varieties. But, you know, if the, if the grower is concerned or really trying to focus on quality, uh, they'll go with the 460 typically in, in, uh, in the areas of Northern Kansas or Colorado, uh, even in the higher altitudes, and then um, in, in Nebraska. And then when they're, if they have salt issues, we'll typically go with like 457. 579 is another one that, uh, one that we've used extensively. Um, it's one of our high ton varieties. Um, it, it's got good enough winter hardiness to go into Nebraska or into Colorado, but primarily used in Kansas. Um, 660 we use in our it's a high jest variety that we use in the southern part of the growing area um, it's very high quality um, that the growers that like it are using it typically for either horse hay or dairy hay that's typically where those varieties will go then we ha also have the dairyland lineup that i'm responsible for in in those three states and the dairyland has the hybrids and those hybrids uh, we use everything from the sixes down to the fours. 
and 3,600, uh, very, very high tonnage variety or hybrid that, that goes into uh, multiple area, growing areas of our, or the state that I represent, Southern Kansas, Southern Colorado, even up into Northern Kansas. And then, uh, then of course we got 4,400, which would be another hybrid in a four dormancy rating that pretty much goes throughout all three of the states that I represent, Colorado, Nebraska, and Kansas. So, any advice that you can provide to an alfalfa grower to help them be successful in their in your territory? The one thing that I see that has really uh, changed in the last few years is getting um, getting your fertility right, trying to do the best job you can. We have a lot of variances in our pHs but getting it as close to, to um, neutral as possible, that helps, helps quite a bit. Um, but the biggest thing that I see where, where people have improved their, um, their stands is increasing their, uh, their, uh, their seating rates slightly, and then also doing a, a double drilling where if you're using a seven and a half inch drill, you're going two different directions at seeding time with a half a rate of each. Those two things have contributed probably more to, to controlling weeds, increasing production and increasing quality. If you limit the amount of seed that you put on or limit, get into a later stands where your stands are thinning out, the tonnage is gonna go down, the weeds are gonna come in and your quality is gonna go down. And that's really where guys can, can uh, increase their overall production is just doing those. This, the double drilling has really made a major improvement in increasing our, our, um, our lessening our, our need for herbicides. Organic growers that I work with throughout the states have really shown me what we can do without the need of herbicides, just using the alfalfa itself, cutting schedules and planting conditions or decrease the need for herbicides. Why should someone work with Ron Miller? One of the funnest things about my job is I get to work with a lot of growers, good growers, not so good growers. And those, those things give you the opportunity to really learn what works in the industry. The other thing that I think that I, I've been well aware of throughout my seed career is the amount of people that I have access to for to, to gain knowledge from them. You know, I've worked with breeders that um, that alfalfa breeders that have been been in this business for a long time. And I've, you know, got them on speed dial that that I can ask a question that I run into that I don't have the answer to. I know where to be able to find those answers. So um, you know, just years of experiences and and just connections and and uh, the ability to contact people that that are in the industry that know, and then just being able to to share really w what good growers are really doing to guys that are trying to improve. You know, when you get the opportunity to work with some really professional, top notch growers, you can share the the things that they've gained. To with other growers, it's kind of like at our our alfalfa U program where we have a our panel discussion. That's one of the highlights of the meeting because the the growers are always interested in learning from other growers. Thank you, Ron.